I'm Beverly. And I'm Sonia. And today we're dishing with you from the Del Frisco Grill located between the White House and the Capitol at 1201 Pennsylvania Avenue. It is the perfect place to be this summer. Yes, it is. And look at the spread before us. We have cheesesteak egg rolls, ahi tuna tacos, and this is the cherry blossom special, if you will. It is scallops with a cherry reduction and arugula salad. And then our drinks, this is the VIP. It's vodka infused pineapple that they squeeze into this wonderful thing. I couldn't resist. Uh, this one has Jack Daniels in it. This it's is a Tennessee, the Tennessee peach. peach and the morning after for mm. our. I have uh, the morning after, which is a, vir a virgin version. There is no Come alcohol. Here for steaks, <laughs> for seafood, and all sorts of other stuff. And make sure you check out the patio, it's opening in the warmer weather. And today our guest is Ebeth Johnson. She is the breastfeeding chef. This is a topic that I care deeply about because I'm going to be doing this in a couple of months. I sure hope so. But this is something that's important for people of all uh, ages, I guess, because it's about nutrition. Tell us about what you do. Yeah, what I do is I help breastfeeding women and women who are about to be breastfeeding who are pregnant like you figure out what are the best things to eat so that they can increase their milk supply, so they can reduce the likelihood of things like colic, cradle cap, eczema. Um, and this all happened because my baby had all of those things and I didn't know what to do even though I've been a chef and I've been interested in healthy eating for over a decade and I had no idea that it was the food that I was eating that was impacting my daughter so I thought if I didn't know that and this is my work then certainly you know a new mom like you probably doesn't know it either. And you guys even know what that stuff is like cradle no. cap and stuff? Well, right. Kind, kind of. of. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. Round babies even if yeah. we don't have our Yeah, own, but you but don't really, I mean unless you sort I mean, of are in that. You don't yeah. really know. What they were eating in breast milk that was encouraging that to happen. Well, it can, it can have an impact on it. You can kind of treat it or address that issue by the food that you're eating. Cradle cap is basically this thick white kind of flakes that happen on the baby's head that's usually due to dairy, tell you the truth. A lot of really? nursing moms are eating dairy and drinking milk because that's what you hear, you know, you're supposed to get for your calcium, right? But if you have a baby and you're breastfeeding, sometimes it can add to the cradle cap or it can increase the colic, which is just babies crying for long periods of time, which is horrible when we you're a new mom and you definitely don't want that to happen. So if you can reduce the likelihood of that happening just by eating delicious, beautiful food, I mean, why not, right? Well, let's talk about some myths because I probably young expectant mothers out there are wondering, well, I was told I was supposed to be eating or drinking this, or no one's really told me what I'm supposed to be eating or drinking. Like, what do, what do people think they're supposed to be doing that they're doing wrong? Well, I think the biggest myth is that you can't eat spicy food. That I have found to be not true. In fact, I always encourage people to eat plenty of flavorful foods, oh, spice it up, spicy cumin, food cayenne, to make the baby all that. Come faster. Come faster. Well, you know, if, if you some people do use it as a treatment if you're pregnant and you're trying to get your baby to come faster. But if you're breastfeeding, it's really not going to be a problem. The flavorful, the more flavorful the food, the better for mommy. The more interesting the breast milk, tell you the truth, because it flavors the breast milk in your baby's. So you won't have like a fussy child later who's like, I don't like to eat that kind of stuff. No. No. Well, wait. If you're eating spicy food, will the baby then be more likely to like spicy food? That's what we're saying. Yeah. Quite possible. Yeah. I mean, because you can change the flavor of your breast milk if you eat like bitter things or spicy things. Your baby gets those nuances. So when you start to introduce um, whole foods to them, not just breast milk, they'll be like, I kind of recognize that. Okay, so, so when you gave us some snacks for the breastfeeding mom, you gave it to my two lovely ladies here as well. Yes. Are they going to suddenly uh, find called, themselves in doubt? It's, What's it's called happen alternative, la it's a alternative lactation cookie. Yes. Also known as mama snacks. Mama, mama snacks. snacks. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I call them an alternative lactation cookie because most of the lactation cookies out there have lots of refined sugar, they have dairy, they have eggs and they have flour and wheat. And this one doesn't because I prefer not to include those things in my cookie. Um, but I also call it a mama snack because it's the kind of thing that any mom can eat, whether you're a breastfeeding mom, a pregnant mom, a mom of like a three or five year old and you're just looking for a good snack for yourself or for your babe. Anybody can eat it. Your husband can eat it. They're not going to start breast. You know, they're not going to start lactating all of a sudden. <laughs> you ladies will be totally we fine can, as we well. Can eat this. You yes, can eat we it. Can have this. And I so hope you do. It what's be in delicious. it? What's in it? Um, it's oats and hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, sesame seeds, all ingredients that are going to help improve your milk production if you're breastfeeding, and that are otherwise just really nutrient dense and delicious. So are these sort of vegan snacks as well? They are vegan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, at what point in your pregnancy are you really starting to think about? 
the breast milk and start thinking about these things, this nutrition for the baby. Because yeah. at months three, four, five, I mean. Good yeah. question, because I didn't think about it till just now. So. <laughs> oh, well, don't worry, you're not late. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. You don't really have to worry about it until you actually start breastfeeding. Because usually when you, if you're eating well during your pregnancy, you're already setting yourself up for great breast milk. It's just once you start breastfeeding, then you want to start oh, thinking about it. Oh, but come on, is anybody that. really eating well during their pregnancy? Because I sure they're hope like, so. They're like, this is the time when it's okay that I pack on some pounds, so I'm going to plus. What I are you trying to say, Kate? I really Michael? want, yeah, <laughs> really. I really want ice cream and I really want chips or no? Yeah, I mean, my hope is that it's a time, breastfeeding time and pregnancy time, my hope is that women will think about eating more healthily, deliciously, eating local, eating fruits, eating vegetables. And I think a lot of women crave that, you know, at mm -hmm. some point because our bodies are so wise and they know what they need, you know, for our baby and for ourselves. So I think it's the time to pack on those delicious, nutrient-rich foods. Now, what about allergies? We hear mm -hmm. a lot about it, children and yes. developing allergies. Uh, what should moms be thinking about if they're breastfeeding are yeah. there things that they shouldn't eat that might foster a food allergy in a definitely. baby definitely yes there's well there's a couple schools of thought about that and i'm in the camp that says don't introduce allergen foods through your breast milk until wait until your baby is maybe 2 or so and the reason i say that is cuz i've experienced it personally you know i was the beginning of my breastfeeding season, I was eating, you know, peanut butter and almond butter and wheat and, you know, things that tend to be, that are known as allergens. And my baby was definitely reacting to them because when I took them out, she was fine. Her skin cleared cool. up. She stopped crying as much. She slept better. So I do tend to encourage women to avoid some of the highest allergens, which are, you know, dairy and eggs, wheat and nuts, and a few others, but you don't have to cut them out immediately. Not like, oh, I'm starting to breastfeed, I've got to cut all these out, no. You know, I don't want women to freak out in that way, but if you notice that your baby's having some reactions, you know, whether it's itchy skin or crying a lot or, you know, colic, any of that stuff, then you can consider, you know, am I eating a lot of dairy or nuts or weed and might that be what's causing it? Or of course you could call me for a consultation. Exactly, <laughs> because, you know, probably a lot of um, expecting or breastfeeding mothers are watching this and thinking, oh my goodness, I, I can learn so much from you. Um, how can they find out more and be in touch with you directly to kind of get some nutrition tips and, and maybe read that new book you just wrote? Yes, well you can go to my um, website which is breastfeedingchef.com and um, on it are recipes and my book will be available May 25th I think, hopefully it'll all come together May 25th <laughs> and um, you can get that and it'll have all the information that you need and if you go to my website you can email me and I'll be happy to um, schedule a consultation with you and there's also a great community on Facebook um, facebook.com slash chef ebeth and there's maybe 2,500 women on there sharing their stories about breastfeeding, about pregnancy, about eating, and I always post recipes and cool pictures too. That is so exciting. Thanks yeah. so much for being with us. Thank you. Thanks we for love having online me. communities because we'd love for you to be a part of ours as well. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can watch us on DCN. And you can watch us on the web. We'll see you next time here on The District Dish.